Hey Hickok45, here I am sitting on the log, doing a B-log again, chatting with you in the woods. <laughs> Pretty strange, huh? Yeah, that's what we do, that's what we do. Wanted to just check in again. I enjoy doing this occasionally and uh, just uh, saying hi and thanks uh, to everybody for, for tuning in uh, so often, so regularly on the videos. It's, uh, you know, we, we're uh, pretty lucky to have so many viewers and uh, lucky that you guys enjoy most of what we do. I'm sure you don't love everything, but uh, most of you seem to enjoy the, the crazy uh, shenanigans and uh, the shooting uh, and uh, showing firearms, uh, whatever education you get out of it. Uh, so we appreciate that. And, uh, and thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, it's, of course, winter time. We're kind of fortunate right now. We have a day that's not too horrible. I think it's about uh, in the 40s right now, and uh, a little bit of sun shining, so can't hate that. I'm gonna try to do a video here, a uh, shooting video maybe in a little bit after I get up from yakking at you. But uh, we do have a couple, thankfully, we, we've been lucky on weather, I guess, although this is mainly a weekend endeavor, you know, through the winter, and uh, if it's a rainy weekend, we don't get anything done. But uh, we've got a few videos. You know, occasionally you see one that was obviously done a month prior or maybe uh, even more than that. But uh, we've got a few, we've got a handful of videos. So uh, we're ready for bad weather. We can go a week or two and still be able to post a video or two. Keep you from, uh, you know, getting too much sleep, you know, give you something to look at, laugh at maybe. We, uh, a lot of shotgun stuff. We still got a couple of shotgun videos. So we'll uh, be sharing with you. We have a, a KSG video. We did a chapter two. We'll post that before too long. By the way, I bought that gun. I'd like to keep you updated on, on those kinds of things. And I do, sooner or later, somewhere, let you know in a radio show or in a video or in a, in a, a vlog. But I went ahead and sent a check instead of uh, sending the, the KSG back. It's, I don't know. It's an interesting gun. I kind of like it. It seems well made. Uh, just uh, not sure. It, it, it would not be my favorite shotgun, but it's interesting enough that I thought I might just need to have that, you know. And uh, versus the the what the UTS uh, 15, uh, interesting shotgun as well. And uh, as I said in the comparison between those two videos, those two shotguns, the uh, the UTS was big, you know, compared with the KSG. You know, if I had to choose between the two, which I did. It would be the KSG. It seems to be a little better built to me, and it's smaller. That's the cool thing about it. Uh, now you do have to switch magazines, you know, to to get to the second magazine. And it's just not that big a deal, you know. One mag holds uh, seven rounds, so you got seven plus one if you want to, without even switching to the other magazine tubes, uh, as as you do on both of them. But uh, I don't know, it just seem a little bit better built. And we've got another video with uh, the UTS. We I think we have a woods walk. And, you know, both of those guns, again, really easy to short shuck. Uh, in fact, that's the only trouble, I guess, we really had, other than on the UTS, the selector switch didn't seem to, you know, work in one direction. I pointed that out in the video. But uh, when we first got the UTS, for example, John and I both were short shucking it until we you know, worked with it and learned, learned to operate it correctly. So it was, it was only operator error. That's the only problem we had with it, operator error me being the operator or John and uh, from then on I didn't have too much trouble with the thing it seemed seemed to work okay uh, at least at least the one I had and for me but uh, so we've got a we got a woods walk with it and we have the KSG chapter 2 so we got some stuff like that we've not posted yet we'll be posting and some other things uh, got a got a Mosin uh, a short Mosin Nagans video uh, or, or rifle that we're going to be doing a video with again. And by the way, you may have, you may have been one of the few people that saw that video posted. Uh, what I really thought was that I had a, a Mosin Model 38. I, I didn't know. I thought that they had the original 9130 and uh, the Model 44 and the Model 38. And I, it was one of those deals where I didn't know what I didn't know. Thought it was a Model 38. Didn't have the bayonet. Picked it up, you know. And, and I learned, I posted that video and I realized, whoa, there are some people a lot smarter than I am, or at least uh, more knowledgeable about those things. A couple of people posted telling me that was a, actually, it was cut down, but it was a 9159 or something. What? I wasn't familiar with that, you know? 
And I got to do a little research, and yeah, there is such a Mose and Nagans. And uh, anyway, I looked at the video again, and uh, you know, I mentioned too many times this is a Model 38, and we don't need to be uh, educating people down the wrong road. So I just took it down. We're gonna we're gonna redo that. We may show you some footage, take some footage from that video, some shooting and different thing, uh, and put in the the video. But where is uh, this is silly to put something up there that's misinforming people. All of us make mistakes in our videos here and there, of course, and you can annotate and correct and you know put uh, a correction in the description. But there were just too many places where I was uh, calling that a Model 38. So I, we're just going to do that. So, but anyway, I like that gun. Uh, the Mosa is not my favorite bolt gun, but I like shorter guns. I like uh, carbine version uh, rifles, and that that thing's a good shooter. Uh, it, it really is. It, it's, it's a handy size, and that's the reason I wanted a, a Model 38 or a 44. Really, the 38 without the bayonet is, is handier in a lot of ways, I think, and, and this gun, uh, uh, too, because it's the same size as the 38 or the 44 in length. But uh, so anyway, I learned a little bit more about the, the Mosin that I did not know, and we'll, we'll pass that along to you in the, in the video. Or, in fact, we're going to do that today, I think. Uh, anxious to shoot the thing again. A lot of fun. So, I don't know what else going on in the world of firearms. Uh, got my handy SKS that will shoot this thing enough. You know, we did get it out for the, uh, the clip versus magazine, or magazine versus clip video. And we need to shoot this uh, more often. It's a pretty nice gun. Uh, this is the Russian version, by the way. Um, so, anyway, enough gun talk, I guess. Had a great day yesterday. Went to the uh, Capitol in Nashville, as many of you did, I hope. Uh, well, I know a lot of you did. And uh, I hope you have a good excuse for not going to your state capitol, because we had around 1,000 people show up here in Nashville. And that, was, that was pretty cool. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, because there were so many viewers there. And it was, it was like a, uh, a meet and greet for me. I didn't want it to be that, or mean for it to be that. I uh, just wanted to show up uh, like everybody else and just kind of support the cause, of course. And they did ask me to say a few words, and I agreed I would do that. Um, and, you know, I didn't really have a speech prepared or anything, but I, at least I thought I'd get up and welcome everybody and, you know, give a high five for the Second Amendment or something. <laughs> but uh, but we got there, and it was just great running into so many of you because, you know, you all are on the other side of the computer screen, and, you know, don't get to see you very often. You know, again, I've got that application that I'm, I just haven't installed yet where I can see through the computer screen and, you know, see what you're doing and, and actually see you. But until we get that installed, you know, it's uh, on our channel, I, I, I don't really see y'all unless it's at a function like this. So uh, that was really cool. I enjoyed it. I met, uh, man, so many people and uh, their children. And uh, it, was, it was a blast. And being there with everybody of like mind, uh, just had a I, I loved it. We, we took the camera. We didn't really go with the intention of making a video. Uh, John carried the camera, uh, the one you're looking through right now. And uh, he got a little footage, and uh, he, he's going to edit that up and you know, put some of that on, the, on, the, on this video. We'll show you some of that. I, I kind of made a little bit of a lame speech, I think, really. I wasn't ready. I was so busy talking to people, I couldn't get... 30 seconds away to kind of collect my thoughts and think, okay, now what would be good to talk about here? What could I say? Meanwhile, other people are making these great speeches, you know, and I just couldn't. I mean, everybody was grabbing me and wanted to talk about guns or, or just say hi or whatever it was. Uh, so I, that's the more important thing. That's the, one of the reasons that I enjoyed it so much. And so man, that took precedent, really. It took priority for me. And so when they called me up there to say something, I just uh, fumbled through a uh, couple of points and uh, I probably embarrassed myself. But anyway, uh, I was among friends, excuse me, I was among friends and uh, so that made it okay. I mean, it was great. So many people that definitely are of like mind in one spot right there on the plaza in Nashville. Uh, it, it was great. I'm sorry you weren't there if you live in the area or if you don't live in the area. Uh, you really missed something. As you're probably seeing in the news reports uh, all around the country, that they went, they went well, as far as I know, and can tell so far. And uh, maybe the next one you can be at on February the 8th, right? So anyway, I'll take a break here, a pause, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll show you a little bit from the one here in Nashville. 
Okay? So I hope you enjoy it. some of them in your own family you work with and we're just in a society that uh, is, is split in a lot of ways we have so many folks who are raised in, a, in an urban environment uh, in society they uh, they don't grow up as I did and maybe many of you were their dad their mom handed them a 22 caliber rifle to shoot uh, they had land on which to shoot it uh, and it, it's unfortunate and so a uh, guns are scary to them and they have no reason to, uh, to think there ought to be a lot of guns around because they're scary items. And, uh, and maybe their friends feel the same way. And, and of course, that's the battle we fight, isn't it? Uh, because if you've grown up like me of us, like myself, the firearm is uh, like a loaf of bread. It's like a, a crescent wrench. It's, it's not a big deal, you know? So that's just so far it doesn't even imagine people thinking that way. The only people who don't enjoy shooting, I always say, are people who've never tried it, and that's the problem. 
many of them have not tried it. Uh, but a really sensitive, artistic, intelligent people that we find ourselves pitted against quite often. And we watch them on television. And when we're not watching YouTube, right? Uh, we, we see them, we enjoy their work, and then we hear them interviewed and we realize, wow, that person's on a different planet than I am when it comes to firearms. It, it saddens us a little bit, it, it perplexes us a little bit. Uh, I understand it, you know, to, uh, like the reason I just mentioned, they grow up in a different environment. And, uh, it's, uh, so it's our job to carry the torch, to educate people, to set a good example, which we, we try to do as we make YouTube videos, and, and most of the people making YouTube videos and doing the kind of work we do, I think do set a pretty good example, as, as I'm sure all of you all do. You wouldn't be here today. So uh, we appreciate the, the work. Uh, and it's just it's perplexing. You know, people are worried about a magazine. How many cartridges that magazine holds? Uh, it's, it's such an irrelevant issue when you get right down to what the real problems are. And I think all of us here at this gathering know that. And I mean, I've gotten to the point where I almost don't want to argue with it. It's so stupid, you know? It's just like arguing about whether the moon's made of green cheese or not. It just <laughs> makes no sense. Uh, it's, it's just very, very, very difficult. So we just got to stay in touch with our representatives, uh, set a great example, make sure our friends are doing that. I'm sure everybody here is doing that. We need to make sure we are spreading the word on that. And we are, that's the answer. We, we've got to make our voices heard. We're not going to change a lot of people's uh, opinions on things if they are just, they're set. They're in concrete. They're, it's slow to change that. But we've got to make the people up on the hill here, and that, that even more important hill in Washington, you know, hear what we have to say. Uh, it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, we just have to do that. The, uh, the thing is that I don't understand why people can't see this so clearly. Talking about magazines, types of ammo, types of firearms, I mean, how crazy is that? The Second Amendment is totally irrelevant if all of us don't have some free, effective, dangerous weapons. I mean, that's, that's so obvious to, to me. You know, if, if we're carrying muskets around, single-shot muskets, we don't have a Second Amendment, you know? Uh, so so that, uh, that evil AR-15 has become a symbol of derision and all sorts of things, but it's... it's uh, it's a symbol of freedom to me. It really is. So anyway, y'all keep doing the good work, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I hope you <laughs> hope you enjoyed that a little bit. That's just uh, you know some random uh, shots from the thing, and of course, like I say, my little uh, uh, speaking at the thing. I wasn't really prepared necessarily, and. Uh, but I, I tried to not embarrass uh, you all <laughs> or embarrass John, but uh, it's good he had the camera there so he could document it, I guess. But uh, it, I'll do better next time if we do anything like that again. I'm not really a public speaker. I can ramble, as you know, but as far as getting up and getting a crowd uh, going or something, I'm not that, that good at that, I don't think. Maybe if I planned ahead, I could, but uh, don't see myself as a rebel rouser. Uh, but it was fun. It was a, it was a great day. Like I say, the uh, uh, you know the the people there are just great folks, and uh, and it was an enormous percentage of them that that were familiar with John. I mean, that that was what was neat. I mean, we didn't even we didn't suspect that at all, and uh, uh, we we had a great time meeting people, meeting some other YouTubers I had not met before, and uh, and then just. And people, people drove from Memphis, people from far east Tennessee. If you know anything about Tennessee, check out a map. It's a very long state, and there were people from way back in east Tennessee, and then people from Memphis, and uh, that's a long drive, you know, uh, from those areas. So uh, it was impressive. Uh, people from up, up from Alabama, people down from southern Kentucky, and uh, that was that was good because it didn't really matter. You know, just get to a capital. Nobody was checking uh, registration cards or anything like that voter registration cards but uh, so we need to we need to keep it up uh, there really there was a good crowd here I noticed it looked to be a pretty good crowd at most state capitals that footage I've seen and the feedback I've seen uh, you get right down to it though you know a thousand people there ought to be ten thousand really 
at every at every state capital. I mean, how many gun owners? I, mean, I could drive down uh, like Franklin Road, a main drag out of Nashville, for a mile and find a hundred gun or a thousand gun owners. You know, uh, we we need to do better at that. There's nothing to be afraid of going out through those. I mean, think about it. It's better in a lot of ways. It's better than gun show. It was. Everybody's just there gathering, like-minded people, you know, supporters of the Constitution, uh, firearms enthusiasts, and it, it's just neat. Uh, I think it'd be cool to have a meeting like that every month. Just, just show up there or somewhere, just people who like firearms, talk guns. I, I don't know. I guess that's kind of what a gun show is in some ways, but, uh, but that, was, that was really, really cool. Uh, so you got so we, we need more numbers. I, now I've read a report that now I know they're they're getting a lot of calls in Washington and at the state capitals. But I read somewhere and I don't remember where, where it was now, where somebody on the inside was saying that the other side, the anti-gunners, are out calling us and that they're actually uh, putting forth a bigger effort than we are. And there's a lot of people I think that are maybe sitting on the sidelines and they're they're expecting other people to make the calls just like. A lot of us, you know, we're all guilty of that in some area. Uh, we're letting other people, you know, join the NRA. Other people, you know, send money to the gun rights groups. Uh, other people go march or go just hang out, you know, at state capitals, uh, thinking that enough other people, you know, those other people will do it to make the difference. And if everybody thinks that, then there are no other people, you know. Uh, make those calls, uh, write those letters every week. You know, uh, your, your two senators, your congressmen, your state reps, every single week. You know, the Ruger.com, uh, uh, they've set up a really uh, easy way to do that. Uh, so you can contact everybody and, uh, and then maybe also send a paper copy to some of these folks. Uh, if it's too easy, they know it's easy, you know. Maybe they need to be getting more hard copy, more paper, uh, you know, just, just to confirm it. The we're, 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 not, we're not fooling around. We're, uh, we don't want any of these things passed, you know. And the thing is, it's too late once it gets to the point where, you know, the, it's, it's ready to be passed and they've got the votes, you know, on the other side. It's too late at that point. You know, we've got to do it now. We've got to do it now. You know, somebody left a comment on one of, one of the videos uh, a week or so ago that I thought was really good. You know, there's always this talk about hiding your gun, burying your guns and that sort of thing. And uh, he, he uh, this may be a really common quote. Uh, I just had not seen it, but it was something to the effect, uh, when it's time to bury your guns, it's time to dig them up. And I thought that was great, you know, because when it gets to a point where we're ready to bury guns, it, it's too late. We should be digging them up. You know, it's all that's uh, 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 figuratively speaking, of course, but uh, it's, it's time to do something now. And that don't mean uh, up in arms, I mean, it's time to get the calls made now and, and make sure they know so we don't get to the point where anybody's thinking about burying their guns. Because at that point, we've lost it. You know, we've lost it. So it, it's like anything like this. It, it happens incrementally. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just trying to remind you how the world works. Um, you know, I, and I don't know enough of the specifics of history, whether it's, uh, you know, in Germany, you know, the, the Jewish population. if. If, uh, and I know I'm treading on thin ice talking about that kind of thing, of course, but, but uh, you know, those poor people, if, uh, if it had just come down an announcement that, uh, oh, guess what, by the way, we want all y'all to get on a train uh, next Friday, and we're going to take you to a prison camp, and you'll never come back. Uh, so just be getting ready for that, everybody. Here's the announcement. You know, no, that kind of stuff happens incrementally. You know, you first start taking up firearms, certain types of firearms, you know, using the best logic, you know, that, that they could muster up. And it happens in little steps and to where it's too late, you know, uh, then it's too late to do anything about it. So, you know, that's, and I know it's in a, a bizarre uh, analogy maybe, but, but some of the worst things that happen, they don't just happen uh, suddenly, you know, it's little steps. And uh, we, we need to realize we're at that point right now where we could lose uh, anything over 10 rounds in a magazine forever. You know, it's not likely to be getting that back. So we've got to act now and make sure this silliness doesn't uh, get, uh, get, get passed. It doesn't even get proposed uh, well. No one's even listening. 
No one's even listening. We want to smack all this stuff down. And again, it takes numbers. You know, yesterday was a good start. Uh, you know, all the calls that you've made and letters you've written, that's, that's all making a difference. I think it's making a difference and uh, we've got to keep it up. We relax. The other side is not going to relax. It's that simple. They will not. You know, they, they've had their organizations going for a long time. The, uh, the people who just hate guns, people who base all their decisions on emotion, they, uh, you know, they're, they're active and they're organized and they're on the internet too. So uh, if we relax, they're going to take up the slack. So we've got to keep it, keep that going. Do not rest. Do not rest uh, because now is the time that, that we're going to make the biggest difference. You know, this this week, this month, you know, again, following Tom Gresham's, Gresham's plan every week, once a week, you know, contact your uh, your senators, your congressmen, even your state reps. And again, at this point, don't worry about convincing them of anything. Just let them know we're not going to stand for it uh, at all. We want no new gun laws. They don't work. The uh, we're just going to vote them out of office. It's just they're going home. They're going home if they vote for any new firearms restrictions. It's that simple. Okay, that's the only thing they understand. And again, that's why this system works. That's why it works. You know, uh, no need to complain too much about superficial politicians, about them just uh, being able to be swayed whichever way the wind's blowing. Hey, in some ways, that's what they're supposed to do. Whatever we really want, enough people are, have a, an effort mounted in a certain direction, making enough calls, writing enough letters to them, they're supposed to move in that direction, you know? So they are going to move in one direction or another. And so it's whoever uh, has a squeakiest wheel, basically. We've got to make sure our wheel is plenty squeaky so that they don't restrict the Second Amendment, okay? And uh, we know this, this, it doesn't make a difference. And, and, and the sad thing, again, as we've all pointed out, I know I'm preaching to the choir, uh, and I guess that's what we're all doing to some extent, but we're trying to get everybody motivated. Uh, we are focusing, unfortunately, politicians focusing on firearms so much and the magazine capacity, and the real problems are not being looked at. They're really not being solved. You know, the problem of gun-free zones. You know, which is the one of the biggest problems. You know, as I said in my uh, little talk yesterday, uh, the uh, newsflash: you know, we don't have a Second Amendment unless people actually have firearms that are potentially dangerous. Duh! You know, and so much of the talk is uh, dominated by that from the other side. It's like, well, these people have firearms. These gun people, they've got dangerous guns. They have magazines in those guns that hold 15 or 20 or 30 rounds. Obviously, who needs that? That's something dangerous. You know? Well, no kidding, Dick Tracy. If, if we're going to have a Second Amendment, if the people are going to be armed and it means anything, there's any teeth in it at all, well, yeah, of course. So that's, gonna, that's a, a, a given. That needs to be the situation, of course. And then whatever other problems the society has, we need to address that. However, that needs to be addressed. If it's uh, have better security in schools, uh, better psychological help for people, whatever it might be, we can't we can't blame it on the Second Amendment and what makes this country what it is. You know? So anyway, you know, you know, <laughs> I'm not telling you anything. Just keep that in mind, and we got to make sure we don't end up having everything restricted, okay? Because it will do no good at all. It will not save any lives. You all know that. Keep writing. Keep calling. Uh, don't, don't be a slacker, okay? Don't be a slacker in this area. We cannot afford to, okay? So my little preaching from the woods, good to talk to you again, and uh, life is still good.